Hey everybody, welcome to Cherry City Guns and Ammo. My name is Rob and thank you for joining me on our introductory video. This channel is dedicated to gun reviews, gear reviews, reloading, shooting, bullet casting, anything gun related, as well as even a little bit of prepping. Now we're not talking about crazy dig holes in the backyard and very shipping container kind of prepping, just logical common sense prepping. And today in our first video, we're gonna take a look at the handgun that is seen in more television and film than any other handgun in the world. The venerable Beretta Model 92. Let's zoom in and take a closer look. Real quick, we'll dive into the history of the company Beretta. It was founded on October 3rd, 1526, clearly making it the world's oldest firearms manufacturer. Now, in the early years, they mainly just made cannon and musket barrels and things like that, all the way up until 1915 when they came out with the model of 1915. That was for the Italian police, I'm sorry, for the Italian military during World War I. They made several models after that, changing little things here and there, the 1919, the 1923, the 1934, and the 1951. Then in 1975, they developed this model right here. This is the Model 92S. This is the first of the Model 92 series that most other 90 series guns are based on. In 1985, when the US military was looking for a new sidearm, they were shown this gun, they liked it, but they had a few complaints, or not complaints, but things that they wanted changed. Number one, they didn't like the European style magazine release. They wanted it moved up to behind the trigger guard, more like in 1911, as well as squaring out the, uh, the trigger guard and adding some checkering. But all in all, this is the same gun. Most of those parts are interchangeable and uh, the shootability is absolutely on par. This is a great gun to shoot. It's a lot of fun. It's very, very accurate. We enjoy it tremendously. When looking at all those pictures of those old models, you'll see that there's some design elements that have stuck around since the very first one, like this scalped front of the slide and the open barrel design. Now why that is a good thing is if you look at that, that is wide open. It makes for very good ejection of brass. Now when you compare it to my Glock Model 17, this is a lot like uh, a lot of uh, semi-auto handguns, but you just have a port for your brass to eject. And usually that works just fine, but every once in a while, they'll kind of bounce around here under recoil. And as the slide starts to go home, it'll catch that brass and it'll stick out the side and it's called a stovepipe jam. I'm not saying that that couldn't happen with the Beretta, but it's far less likely. It's just such an open, open design and has a unique look to it. It's not something that you see on most handguns. Now to get into the history of, of the Beretta in the movies and even television, um, after it, it was adopted by the military in 1985 and became the 92FS or the, the M9 as its military designation, it was imported in large numbers into the US and it struck a chord with a lot of people right off the bat just because it is such a nice looking gun and it became a, a really common mainstay in most movies such as Die Hard, um, lethal Weapon, which we'll talk a little bit more about Lethal Weapon later because there's there's one thing in Lethal Weapon regarding the 92 that I personally as a 92 owner find kind of funny. But if you pay attention, you can see them in tons of different movies. As I'm showing you, there's just clip after clip after clip and I could make this video 30 minutes long of just showing pictures from, from movies. Um, or they're just using a stock 92. And then if some movies, they've even really radically transformed them. If you take a look at this gun that Robocop used, that's a Beretta 93R with some seriously heavy, heavy modifications, but it's hard, it's still this gun. Um, also you see it in Equilibrium, which is one of my favorite, you know, post-apocalypse type movies. Um, again, just heavily modified. And even in the Underworld series. Oh, Kate Beckinsale. Now we're going to take a look at how to field strip the Breda 92. And with the 92S, once again, we've got the heel style magazine release. And we'll just check and make sure the gun is empty, which it is, as you can see. Um, now this is a very, very easy gun to take down. Is it this easy? Ah! 
Now you see in that clip, Jet Li basically ripped the gun apart with one hand. Well, let's take a look at how easy it actually is. You've got a button on this side that must be depressed. After that, you've got a takedown lever on this side, which flips down. Once that's happened, slide and barrel comes right off. Now, is that something you can do one-handed? Let's try it. Yep, it's that easy. Good, I mean, how did he do that thing with the gun? How the hell did he do that? That's kind of concerning to me because Lethal Weapon 4 was in 1998, and we know that Briggs has been carrying a Beretta not Model 92 since at least 1989 in Lethal Weapon 1. So how did he not know how he did that? I'm confused. Now what else can I say about the Beretta Model 92? Like I said, the S model has a, a weird safety, um, but pretty much every other Beretta 92 series pistol has it behind the trigger guard, more like a 1911. Um, almost all of them with the uh, exception of the 92G. Uh, the, the safety is also a decocker. When put back onto safe, you can then recock it or fire double action for the first shot. Now the double action, I mean like all, it's heavy, but the single action, although it could be a little lighter, is very crisp. I would guess that's probably six or seven pounds. So it could definitely uh, use a little bit of a trigger job to lighten it up a little bit, but it's very, very crisp. You know exactly where the wall is. And once you hit that wall, there is absolutely zero creep whatsoever. And to take a look at the reset, right there, very short reset. Let's try that again. So take up. There's the wall, brakes, reset, right there. Very short reset. Helps if I don't accidentally hit the decocker safety. Here's the reset right there. Boom. Really, really a very nice reset, very audible, very tactile, and a nice crisp trigger, despite it being a little on the heavy side. Um, this really helps with being able to shoot this gun accurately. I like the fact that I can uh, have a round in the chamber, decock it, and carry with a loaded chamber, but un, un, uh, with a safety off, but with the, the hammer down. So first shot has to go double action. I really like that option. And uh, these aren't the factory grips. You're not going to get these on the 92S or 92FS. So just that with this being a, a police military or police and or military gun that was carried for God knows how many years, the plastic grip panels that came with this were rather scratched up. Um, there's a little bit of wear on this gun. You know, pretty much all of the hard edges, they take a beating uh, from going in and out of holsters. You get some holster wear. You get a little bit of wear there on the front of the trigger guard. But for, for being a probably a 40 year old gun, it's really in great shape and it's a joy to shoot. Uh, out of all of my handguns, my entire family, me, my wife, my two daughters, and my son, this is our favorite to shoot at the range. It really is just a very enjoyable gun to shoot. Shoots accurately and uh, yeah, it just puts a smile on your face. In summation, uh, I really am a big fan of Beretta Model 92 in all of its variants. Uh, from the S to the FS to the, the G, um, the Breda 93, 96, 92X. They created so many models based on this gun that most of the parts are interchangeable. And, you know, they're all great. They're super, super reliable. Uh, they all tend to shoot very, very accurately. Um, and if you're interested in one of these 92Ss, uh, you got to get on it quick, but these can be had for very cheap. There's still a few places online where you can purchase these. Um, I bought this in March, so I really haven't had this gun very long. Uh, but I got it for $269 through Palmetto State Armory. And already, because the, the huge bunch that was imported to the United States is already drying up, the price has gone up. You can still get them, I believe, for around $329. Uh, but as, as they, they dry up, the price is going to keep going up. Now, if you don't like some of the, the European magazine release and some of those things, you can go out and buy a brand new Beretta Model 92 uh, FS or a Beretta M9 
and those can be had in the 500 to 550 dollar range and then there's some other models uh, like the 90 or the m9a3 um, the 92x that get closer to the eight nine hundred thousand dollar range uh, but you know i don't think if you if you buy any of these variants of the breda model 92 you'll be very happy with them uh, so this is your first time watching one of my videos and you haven't subscribed please go ahead and hit the subscribe it really means a lot to me i really appreciate it and thanks for watching my video let's take a closer look at how the gun comes <laughs>